Hi, good evening, Dr. Gulash, and good evening, my dear friends. I today want to share with you the topic of using language memoirs in ESL classroom. As you can know that we have already discussed many, many topics related to literacy development and language learning. However, today I want to share with you one of the thoughts that I always have and I always believe. But before that, let's think about when we read. Sometimes we choose autobiographies. So I want to ask you why we want to read those kind of autobiographies. And I believe you know those two great persons, right? And um, why we won't read them? Why we won't read their books? Maybe, maybe for the following two reasons. We try to learn from the great members of our society. We want to know that how they achieve their success. And we want to know how can we learn from them, from their success learning from the great members of our society. Or we try to gain strength from their life experience, knowing maybe something they have done wrong we should avoid, or we know that something we should definitely do because they did that to achieve success. So that makes me to think, if we can read autobiographies for those two reasons, can we use those two reasons and gain those two reasons into our language classroom. So that made me to think, language memoirs, can we use that? But before this, we have to consider what is a language memoir? Basically, a language memoir is a book written by an author who reflects on his or her own language learning experience or his or her experience in a new culture how he or she interact with this new culture and new language and want to reflect on the successes and the failures of his whole process. So, in one of my, uh, one of my favorite books of language memoir is this one, Two Years in the Mountain Pot. I still remember, like, I first read this book when I was in my graduate program. At that time, I just got to the North America, and I found that so many things are so different, and my life experience got greatly changed. I want to know what I can do with a language memoir. And for this language memoir, I have learned so many things. For example, in this language memoir, the author talked about language partners, developing friendship, with the native speaker. I know this is a very old idea that is nothing surprising or nothing interesting to me. However, I gradually realized from this book, knowing that language, language partner is not about practicing language or practicing how you deliver speaking or deliver content, how skillful you are going to be. It is about how you can develop relationship the friendship that you have with your language partner, you gradually are going to be a good friends, very close members with each other. And then with this friendship, you started to think and consider, reflect on your own culture, on your own identity, on who you are, who you want to be. And I believe that is one of the major questions we always ask ourselves when we want to learn a language. I do suffer those kind of problems. I can feel that in my own life learning experience of this language. I found many, many times my belief of traditional Chinese culture was shaken by the, the Western English speaking culture. And I found I can gain this kind of considerations from this book. And also I realized by reading this book, the author mentioned about do you want to accept the new culture or do you want to adapt to the new culture? One example the author mentioned in this book was saying that he changed his dressing style from the traditional Chinese clothes, very reserved style with very plain colors and uh, no fancy patterns to a style that a little bit more like a hippie and make him to think that do I really want this? 
and is that who I am? Then he finally reached the conclusion that as a Chinese speaker, as a member who believes in Chinese culture, that makes him a unique person in this setting in North America. And that make him to be a unique individual, that who he really wants to be. He wants to speak English wonderfully and perfectly. That is one thing from the language perspective. But he also wants to maintain his Chinese identity forever, as long as he believes it. Therefore, I believe maybe we can use language memoir to encourage our learners to consider issues like that. And then it makes us to consider, do we believe language memoirs are going to be useful for ESL classrooms? Let's think about this. So for language memoirs, if we want to use them, we have to consider, are they going to fit into the language classroom? What do we expect from a literature piece, a literature work, to serve a function in the language classroom? The first one is, we would expect the, the literature or the language material, material to be the best language input. I would say, yes, language memoirs can do that, because language memoirs are written by the ones who are successful in language learning. They for sure can be the perfect language input. Second, enhance virtual cycle in reading. I believe, yes, the same. Why? Because this language memoirs, this type of literature, they are, writing, they are writing about the experiences all the language learners are experiencing. They share the common problems, they share the common beliefs, they share the common difficulties, and they share the common success and failures. So I think when we ask our students to read language memoirs, they will be very interested into the content because they can connect to the book. When a reader can connect to the book, they will have the effect of reading, and the virtual cycle is enhanced. Third, as I mentioned, language memoirs can always connect to the students. So I believe for sure, language memoirs for the content, for the language, for the uh, cultural uh, conflicts and for the identity shifts and a language loss, we can always, always encourage our students to connect to the book because they love those stories. And also, there are so many different languages, uh, language in the world. And also, there are so many language memoirs written by the speakers of different languages. So for sure, we can connect to all of our students and all the language communities. And then number fourth, the language memoirs can enlighten us on our considerations of life. Yes, because for most language learning students, they have always have the shift in their identity, the confusion of thinking who they are. And this consideration will be perfectly reflected in most language memoirs. And then next, uh, the language memoir can initiate meaningful language output. Why is that? Because when we can connect to the book, when we can consider many meaningful questions, we will always want to express our considerations. We will always want to write something to show that we agree or we disagree. Therefore, I believe language memoirs can serve this function as well. So, I'll say language memoirs like this one, one of my favorites, is always a good choice. But also, also if you think that my students do not read those kind of literature words. They do not like uh, so many heavy books or maybe uh, vocabulary heavy books. We can say graphic novels. This two, these three books, they are perfect examples of how we can do uh, to fit into the younger learners or to the ones who do not know that many vocabularies or that many new words for the new language. From the graphic novels and many, many new books, they started to discuss the heavy topics like going to a new culture, learning to a new language, or experiencing the difficulty and challenges in this culture, or in this educational setting, or in many other life situations as well. 
So I believe if you don't think language memoir is just a book, it's a good choice, we do have language memoirs in the forms of uh, graphic novels. So I believe if we can, if we can have graphic novels or language memoirs or literatures in our textbook, we will be have the best choice. So I would say <clears throat> if if you want to have more interest in listening to or know more about language memoirs, please wait for my paper presentation and because I will have more about that. Thank you very much for listening. Wish you have a good night. See you.